Here's the next set of outcome variables that Thistlethwaite and Campbell look at. They look at the percentage of students planning to go on to graduate study, and the percentage of students planning on being a college teacher or a scientific researcher. Now, these are high school students, and in this sample of students who have high test scores, basically all of them are going to go on to college, so it's not worth looking at whether you go to college or not as an outcome variable, or whether you're planning on going to college, because they all do anyway. There's no variation, so it's not an interesting outcome to try to explain, So, at least for this sample. So, Instead, that's why they look at where you go on to graduate school, or are you interested in being a scientific researcher or a college teacher. So again, on our horizontal axis, we have the aptitude test scores of the students in arbitrary units. They've normalized them. Now, this is called the running variable in an RDD analysis, this variable that runs along the horizontal axis and determines whether you get treated or not. So on the vertical axis, we have the percentage of students who either go on, plan to go on to graduate study, that is these two lines up here, or who are planning to be a college teacher or a scientific researcher, that's these two lines down here. And these are percentages over here. So remember, we've got, always got three variables for an RDD analysis. Our running variable, our treatment variable, whether you got a certificate of merit or not, and then our outcome variable that's on this vertical axis. So, let's just look at the results first. Well, for whether you're planning on becoming a college teacher or a scientific researcher, see, there's basically no difference in outcomes across the cutoff. You see that if you look at the regression lines, it's very close, and if you look at just the averages for 10 versus the average for 11, it's also very close. So, if anything, there's about a 1% treatment effect. Up here, for whether you plan on going to graduate school or not, um, if you look at the regression lines, there's about maybe a 3 to 4% difference. And the same thing's true if you do the non-parametric analysis and just look at the average for 10 versus the average for 11. So that suggests that there is a little bit, maybe is a little bit of a treatment effect, but not an enormous one of getting the certificate of merit and therefore getting public uh, recognition on whether you're planning on going to graduate study. Okay, so those are the main findings in Thistlethwaite and Campbell. Now let's mention a few more things that are important in every RDD analysis. The first is that you're only actually going to learn causal effects right around the cutoff. So the causal effects for people who have test scores about 10 or 11. Remember, they're heterogeneous uh, treatment effects out there in the population. Each unit has a different treatment effect of what would happen to them if they got public recognition versus if they did, what would happen if they did not get public recognition. So we're look, learning something about the average treatment effect for people close to the cutoff. We're not learning about the average treatment effect for people far from the cutoff, over here for example, or maybe way over here. In fact, it's very plausible that there is a difference between the treatment effect here and the one over here and the one over here. For example, suppose that income is highly correlated with your test score, so that people down here have very low income, they couldn't spend a lot of money on preparing for the test and test prep stuff, um, so on average they might do worse than people up here who have higher income who can spend a lot of money on tutoring and stuff like this, and therefore get higher test scores. So the people with high income, maybe they have so much income that you know, they're planning on going to graduate study already because they can afford it. So if they get public recognition or not, it just doesn't affect whether they're going to go on to grad school. So that might mean that the treatment effect over here is zero. Whereas over here, if people who have low test scores and maybe also have low income on average, maybe they weren't planning on going to graduate school because they couldn't afford it, um, among other reasons. So that might mean that the treatment effect for getting public recognition is zero over here because even though that might make them want to go to uh, grad school, if they can't afford it or can't find a way to do it, then they might not be able to uh, go. So we could have a zero treatment effect over here, a zero treatment over effect over here, but then for people here in the middle, there might be a positive treatment effect. So this is the important takeaway. Even if we find positive treatment effects here, as we maybe do, about 3 or 4 percent, that only applies to a certain part of the population. Okay, it doesn't tell us what's happening everywhere else. 
That's one big limitation of RDD studies. Another thing to keep in mind is we've got three, treat three variables, our running variable, our treatment variable, and our outcome variable. If we just look, uh, say, over here at these regression lines, then we can't interpret these as causal effects of test scores on outcomes. This is just telling us about the correlation between test scores and whether you're going to plan on go to graduate study or not, and it's positive re related. But it's just a correlation. There's no, nothing that suggests that this is a causal effect. The only causal effect we're getting here is this difference across the cutoff of having the certificate of merit or not. We're not getting anything about the causal effect of test score by looking at these regressions. Okay, so those are some important parts to remember about RDD studies. And again, with these, test these differences we found here, you would really need to do statistical inference to figure out whether this was actually a statistically significant effect. Well, since this paper, published in 1960, was the first paper to do this, indeed to invent RDD, you know, they didn't have the tools for doing that. And we've only developed these tools since this paper existed in the first place. So you can't really blame these guys. You gotta cut them some slack for being trailblazers. But nowadays we have a lot of tools for doing statistical inference. And so you'd actually wanna do that um, in any recent modern research on RDD. So those are the basics. Pretty much all RDD designs looks very similar and have similar analysis. So that's how it works. Mm -hmm.